Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. There aren't many places we haven't been sniffing out that beautiful gasoline fragrance. This time, we're in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and we're checking out over 100 first responders to the last responders. The Professional Car Society is dedicated to keeping all these vintage ambulances and hearses just the way they were. This is their 40th anniversary, and today we're gonna hear some cool stories from people who have been involved with these for quite some time. The Professional Car Society started back in 1976 when a small group of people decided that it was time to focus on having these cars earn their spot in the collector car hobby. There was a time when cars like this weren't allowed at car shows and were shunned elsewhere as well. This is the largest club of its kind. The reason the folks here have their own story is because no two cars are exactly the same and all of the vehicles I own, I actually know the history, where it served, and in some cases I've actually met people who've worked on that particular ambulance, uh, and even in one or two cases met people who were actually patients who were injured or ill who were transported in those ambulances. You'll see many Cadillacs, Lincolns, Buicks, and Oldsmobiles, but they never built hearses or ambos. There were bodybuilders such as Superior, Miller Meteor, and Flexible who custom built the required body on a mass-produced chassis. This ambulance was brought back from the dead. 1940 Buick Century Flexible. Have you had to do a lot of work to it? Or? Oh no, it was a junkyard car. It was pretty badly rotted out and it's, it's showing its age with the paintwork. It's the only car I've ever painted too in 40 years. Until well into the 60s, many of these vehicles actually did double duty as both an ambulance and a hearse. You notice there's like no room for equipment, so you ask the question about what could you carry? A box of Band-Aids, that was about it. Well, they wouldn't even ride in the back with a patient. It was a ride to the hospital, that's all it was. This man drove further than a hospital ride, making a 500 mile trek from Canada. His hearse was ridiculously stunning. And it was a Freddie Flintstone special. It, uh, it's all wood framed underneath, and the wood was all rotted out of it. The windshields were all smashed out. It took us almost 10 years to restore it to this condition. Inside, that's a, a copy off the original. There was enough of the originals left that I redid those myself. Uh, they're all one sheet of walnut veneer, and then you had to uh, router out the pattern, and then you took a Q-tip and wood bleach and bleached the later colors out. And on the outside of the car, it's all cast aluminum panels that uh, look like carved drapes. We put it back, it was 99% as we know it as original. We can't find another one in a three-way like this, so we're not 100% sure, sure everything is exactly, but as far as we know it is. Once horse-drawn hearses were being phased out, Henry Ford's Model T was transformed. This one is documented 100% authentic. You're not going to see many of these. I've known about this particular hearse since I was about seven years old and just always liked it from the time that I saw it. A fellow that owned it passed away and a couple years after he passed away the family contacted me and so it's kind of fulfilled a lifelong dream to own this hearse. Perhaps it's the adrenaline from a siren screaming down the road or the handcrafted detail put into these vehicles. They're all about saving and celebrating a life I couldn't define beautiful any better. So if you're alive out there, it's easy to see that these people are dead serious about their hobby. Now, if the hearses still give you the heebie-jeebies, I just want you to understand that one day, we're all going for a ride in the back of one of these.